What's going on guys, my name is Arrow, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how anyone with any build can make well over 10 divines per hour very easily. Let's get into it. This is not some strategy that requires a super fast build or a ton of damage or good defenses. All it requires is that you buy a couple of maps and you buy one sexton. You've probably heard of boss rushing. Boss rushing is the idea where you take points on your atlas tree that benefit killing the boss. So things like invitations will drop, possibly currencies, things like that. This is an altered version of that. Basically, your goal here is to go into the map, kill the boss and the harbinger that spawns with it, and then leave and start a new map. There are a couple of reasons why this strategy is available to everyone and unlike some of the other strategies that require a very very fast build this does not the nature of this boss trust strategy is that because it's on city square you always know where the boss is and you can kill them really really quickly there is one downside to this strategy and is that you do not entirely sustain your maps there are things you can do to try to sustain better or you can do what i'm doing and that's run your crimson temples when you run out of city squares and then you can go back to city squares I have data from about 300 maps that I put together, but I have run almost a thousand of these maps by now. They're incredibly quick, they're super easy, and you, you don't need good damage or speed to be able to do this. So the strategy, you run a Harbinger Sexton on your map. And what that does is it makes each boss in the map, City Square has three, drop additional currency shards, the same way that would happen if you killed a Harbinger. It also makes a Harbinger spawn at the boss. So in City Square, you run to the boss, you kill three bosses and one Harbinger, and then you leave. That gives you four stacks of currency, things like Exalt Shards, Annulment Orbs, Ancient Orbs, Fracturing Shards, and even potentially Mirror Shards. Now, I did drop a Mirror Shard, I'm not going to include that in my data, but the returns without expenses were about 18 div per hour, but we're going to talk about what you can get guaranteed every single time you run a set of 100 maps because this is really, really consistent. Now, I have done almost a thousand of these maps by now, and I can confirm that the data that I got in the first 300 was accurate, if not a little bit low. I think I might have gotten a little bit unlucky with the amount of fracture shards that I got. So if anything, you can expect better results than I show you here. So what did we get from every 100 maps? If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and check out some of my links below. You can come see my Twitch. I am live almost every single day. We make all sorts of cool stuff on that stream. New builds all the time. Interesting farming strategies like this one. And overall, we just have a lot of fun. So come check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I also have a Discord, a merch store, all kinds of fun stuff. Check out those links in the description. Well, really, I was doing 96 maps, but let's just call it 100 because it's easier to, to count that way. We got... A little over 100 chaos and these numbers are super consistent we got a little over 100 chaos we've got about 20 annulment orbs about 20 ancient orbs around two to three exalts and seven to ten fracture shards so at bulk selling prices which is what you'll be doing if you do the strategy because you're going to be running a lot of these maps that's the whole point in ancient orbs you're going to have 1.4 divines you're going to have 0.2 divines of exalts you're going to have 0.6 divines of annulment orbs you're going to have three to four divines worth of fracture shards about 0.4 divines worth of chaos orbs and then you're going to get four invitations which right now are selling at 1.5 divines a piece in bulk i've been running the exarch invitation i'm not sure what the eater invitation sells for but if you wanted to run that you could so just that currency combined nothing else no no other invitations no Elder maps, no Conqueror maps, all of which we are farming and we are dropping a lot of. None of that stuff included. You are making almost 12 divines per hour by running 96 of these in an hour, which is absolutely feasible. I was doing 96 on stream in about 65 to 70 minutes, and that includes stopping to do viewer gambles, stopping to look at viewers' builds. These maps take no time at all. Realistically, if you have a decent bit of move speed, you can do two per minute, which is 120 per hour, but we're not even going to include that. We're gonna say 96 per hour 
very, very achievable, even for slow builds, because all you do is run to the center of the city square, kill the boss, kill the Harvey, and leave. So 12 divines per hour with nothing else included. So what are our costs? The costs are one map and one sextant. You can run, you run the Harbinger sextant, which I paid 24C in huge bulk. I think I bought 10 divines worth. And now I have a quad tab full of them. They're 24C a piece, so 6C per map. So that's a hair under 600 chaos. And then the maps are about 4C a piece, so that's 384C. And I'm including map cost in here because you don't quite sustain, so you do need to buy some maps if you're not going to be willing to run Crimson Temples and do some other strategy when you run out of the first ones. So a couple divines in cost, but that is easily made up for in the other stuff that you drop. So I didn't do a great job of separating all the maps out. I think in one of the uh, screenshots that I have in the background, I forgot to finish separating out all the boss maps, but you're going to get somewhere around five of each type of map. So Elder, Shaper maps, Conqueror maps, and the Distant Memory maps, which can include the Cortex. At current prices, you're looking at 10 to 12C for Elder and Shaper maps. And then Guardian maps, last time I checked, were selling for 20 to 30C. I don't know what they exactly are right now. But you're going to get a handful of each of those in every 96 maps that you run. You're also going to get invitations. Elder Slayer invitation drops, that's 140C or something. These are consistent guaranteed drops that you will get. Another thing that makes this strategy great is that even though you don't sustain your city squares, you drop a ton of Crimson Temples. You can either sell them and then buy city squares back. There are a ton of people selling city squares because so many people are running Crimson Temple and generating tons of city square maps. I personally don't like selling maps or buying maps, so I am running my Crimson Temples I'm doing currently doing a harvest strategy. I'm not really enjoying it. I'm actually probably going to be switching back to this boss rushing strategy, even though I already did a thousand of them. I'm not really enjoying the harvest stuff on Crimson Temple, so I'm going to switch back once I have a healthy supply of city squares again. So let's look at the Atlas and talk about what you need to get on your tree in order to make this work. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, planner that we have on Max Roll. The link to this will be down in the description. This basically is going to show you the entire strategy and everything that you need to know in order to do it. So over here, you want City Square favorited for all except for one, and you want Crimson Temple. That is so you are going to drop connected maps. Crimson Temple is a connected map. This sells super well, so if you wanted to sell this, you absolutely can. You're not gonna be using anything on the map device or just quant there. No scarabs are required. You wanna use the Exarch side. And then there is one, potentially two compasses that you can use. Number one, mandatory, adds a harbinger. This is the whole point of the strategy. And then number two, I was using map bosses are accompanied by bodyguards. In bulk, these run somewhere between three to four C per sextant, which is less than one C per map. You do get a number of maps back from this that actually make it worth it. I tested with and without, and it's definitely worth to use this. So if you want to get some more maps back, help you sustain a little bit easier, this I recommend adding. For the tree, you basically are doing a basic boss rush tree with a tiny bit of Harbinger added, and we'll talk about the Harbinger first. So, things that you don't care about on Harbinger, additional Harbingers being added to the maps. The reason you don't care about this is because you're not clearing the map, you're only going to the boss. So, these three nodes give you additional uh, currency shards, but additional Harbinger we're not taking. Same thing here, additional Harbinger, we don't care about that, but we will take the increased cooldown recovery rate because that makes them spawn their, their mobs faster. Up here, additional Harby and King Harby. We don't take any of this because actually, I didn't learn this until the second 100 maps I ran. The Harbinger that spawns with the boss cannot be a King Harbinger, which means first wave is useless unless you plan on clearing the map, which you should not. So it's only seven points invested into Harbinger on the tree. So it's otherwise a basic boss rush map. You're taking lots of uh, map drop dupe because then you can dupe the maps that you drop. Very straightforward. You're getting special maps to drop. So Elder and Shaper Guardians, things like Cortex from Vivid Memories, Conquer maps from Conquered Conquerors. And then you wanna take this here for increased chance to drop Maven Invitations. These include the 10 ways for 10 way maps. This includes Elder Slayers, the Formed, the Feared, all of that. You're gonna get a bunch of those to drop. And these really help. Then you take 
all of these shaping nodes to have more of a chance to drop maps. And that is basically the entire strategy. I have some other points here, things like this. Final map boss has a chance to drop a scarab, has a chance to drop some currency. These are whatever, they're not that good, but there's not a lot of other things that we want, so I just throw them on. This strategy is brainless. You don't need a good build, you don't need a big brain. If you wanna stop being poor, do this strategy. You cannot fail. If you start out and in your first 20 maps, you don't get any fracture or shards, just keep going. Keep putting maps in. Don't stop to post on Reddit. Don't stop to message your friends about how you didn't get any good drops. Put another map in and you will make money. This is absolutely foolproof. So get in there. I've done a thousand of these. Get into your maps and start blasting. That's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I will be live right after this video. And as always, take care.